Okay. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, as mentioned, I'm going to talk about 64-bit um, migration vulnerabilities, and this is um, joint work with um, Fabian Yamaguchi, Alvin Maya, and um, Conrad Rieck. Um, so we will uh, look at uh, another subclass of software vulnerabilities, namely um, those subtle flaws um, in the processing of integers. And this is particularly critical if you process memory. So if you um, calculate buffer sizes or offsets, amounts of, uh, of amounts of bytes to copy and so on. So you basically have three um, different types of these flaws. So you have truncations, um, overflows, underflows, um, and different sinus issues. And I'm pretty sure most of you are well aware of these um, different flaws, but let me just um, quickly skip through some minimal working examples for each of these subclasses before we um, narrow these down to um, bugs that are actually induced by the migration process um, as such. So um, here we have a, a simple example where we do receive an attacker controlled value of type unsigned int and then we do some um, allocation and a mem copy afterwards. And you should have already spotted the um, bug here, so if we um, assign a variable of um, unsigned int to a variable of type unsigned short, um, we get the truncation if the value is larger than, in this case, um, the maximum value of um, unsigned short. And if we allocate mem uh, memory on, on the basis of one of these variables, the truncated one, and copy data based on the other one, we get a buffer overflow, right? Um, on the other hand side, um, you get an integer overflow if you have an expression and that expression gives you a result that falls out of the range of the um, expressions type. Um, again, our um, example with uh, little um, variation, so this time we add a constant value to our um, attacker controlled value. And so think of a plus one for um, accounting for a null termination of a string, for instance. And if the result of this addition um, lies out of the scope of the, the variable's type, um, we simply um, flip over, so overflow the, the variable, and um, in this example where we have um, x equals um, u int max plus one, we end up at um, allocating zero bytes. And if you use the initial um, value for doing the mem copy, um, you're writing significantly more um, bytes to the buffer that cannot even hold a single byte. Um, finally, when we have a look at um, assignments again and these assignments um, issues, so if this assignment involves um, types of different assignments, we of course somehow have to change um, the assignments um, of the one variable. Um, Again, our um, example, this time we get a um, variable of type um, short, and we explicitly cast this value to unsigned short, um, which, well, obviously changes signedness, and we reinterpret um, this value, for instance, minus one, to the maximum value of um, unsigned short. And again, if we um, use the initial value for the mem copy, um, Things are a little different because here we have an, an implicit cast to size t, and size t is larger than short, and there we have an additional sign extension um, in order to, to comply with the two's complement for the representation of negative numbers. So we simply um, pad the, the sign bit to the front um, of the value. Okay, um, so we, we narrow this, this down to um, such integer-based vulnerabilities that are actually um, induced by the migration process from 32-bit um, to 64-bit platforms. And the crucial point here is that different platforms define different um, data models, and these data models um, define the, the width of the basic integer types, but I will talk about that um, in a second. Um, we basically have two different um, sources for this kind of flaws. So either um, these changed widths for um, the integer types trigger or cause new bugs, 
or um, we can use the, the larger address base we have at hand um, to actually trigger bugs that have been code um, base um, all along, but couldn't be um, exploited because we didn't have uh, enough memory we could address. And the interesting um, thing about the whole thing is that well, years after 64-bit computing has been established in the mass market, this still is an issue. Um, yeah, so as mentioned, data models define the, the width of basic integer types, and here we have um, four common data types and exemplary um, platforms um, alongside with some basic integer types. And the interesting part here in the table is the relation between the size of pointers or the size of registers to the sizes of um, the type int and type long. So for um, ILP32, which is used for um, the 32-bit uh, versions of Windows, Linux, um, BSD, and macOS, um, pointers, type int, and long are all of the same size, 32-bit or 4 byte. And this is not the case anymore for um, the 64-bit version of Windows, for instance where the pointers are twice as large as int and long. And also for 64-bit um, Linux, um, well, their pointers and long, variables of type long are of the same size, but, but int is still um, half the size of four bytes. And this becomes quite um, crucial when looking at integer-based uh, vulnerabilities. So for truncations, Things work pretty much the same as on any other platform. There simply are new combinations where um, truncations may happen. And most importantly, um, I mentioned that before already, um, the type int simply is not as wide as registers, at least not on 64-bit platforms, right? And therefore, it is not guaranteed to fit uh, memory addresses or indices. Well, um, size T is. Another or more noteworthy examples are casting pointers to integers, which is um, discouraged anyways because you have this um, change in, in signedness. Um, maybe something more subtle um, are pointer differences. So if you subtract one pointer from the other, um, you actually get a, a pointer diff type, which is of the same size as pointers. And you really should not um, assign this to integers because in 64-bit platforms, um, integers are only half the size. Um, also for the signness issues, um, the sign extension, the um, rules for applying those are the same as, as previously. So we have again uh, another of those um, simple examples where we get an um, attacker-controlled value of type int and we explicitly cast it to unsigned in for the memory allocation, and then um, make a mem copy again. And on those 32-bit um, platforms I mentioned, um, this is basically not a problem at all, because um, if you consider a negative number, minus one, and you change signness and reinterpret re the, the value, um, you get um, uint max, and the same holds true for the implicit conversion to size t. And the reason that this is not a problem is that um, the maximum value of int and size t, or unsigned int and size t, um, are the same on this, this data model. Now, if you have a look at the same example for a 64-bit um, data model I mentioned earlier, um, suddenly you get um, a sign extension for this implicit conversion to size t and you end up with a, a way larger value for the mem copy again, and you overflow your buffer. Um, we do have a, a second sinus issue I wasn't mention, um, mentioning before. Um, this is the sinus of comparisons. And this is particularly interesting because in case you have a check that is actually, um, or is making sure that you do not overflow your buffer, um, this may, um, become ineffective. So if you have this um, buffer of a particular size and an um, attacker-controlled value, in this case um, of type long, um, you check the length 
uh, against uh, the buffer size, and if that one is above the buffer size, you simply return, and otherwise you do the copy. Um, the thing here is that on these 32-bit platforms, this comparison is actually performed unsigned. So if you receive a negative value, this is reinterpreted as unsigned value. And that's actually the reason why um, this check also works for, for negative numbers. So this probably is not the, the intended behavior of the developer, but still the expected outcome is still the same. So if we have minus one, which is getting reinterpreted to this huge um, unsigned number, we still um, return. Now, this is not the case anymore if you increase um, the size of the type um, long, because then you have an assigned comparison for your check and you actually compare a minus one to the buffer size. So you bypass this check and you will um, cast the length um, to size t for the mem copy again and end up um, overflowing the buffer. Um, the next two examples are pretty um, interesting as well because you make use of this um, larger address space you have at hand um, to trigger existing bugs. Um, the idea of the example is, is the same again. So we have an attacker controlled value of size t, allocates some memory. This time everything um, goes well. And then we do a, a copy operation based on a custom loop. And you have this unsigned int counter variable. And on 32 bits, um, everything is fine again because size t and unsigned int are of the same size or the same width. And therefore, they also have the same uh, maximum value. Now, if you have a 64-bit um, data model, one of those I mentioned earlier, um, size t is larger than unsigned int, and also the uh, maximum value is larger than the maximum value of unsigned int. So you would, if an attacker specifies a length of, uh, which is larger than u int max, you will end up um, with an infinite loop because this um, loop counter will overflow over and over again, again because it's never going to reach the stopping criteria and therefore you're going to overflow the buffer. And finally, we have this, this example that was already mentioned in the, in the shell coders handbook um, alongside with the comment that it won't be possible in a practical case to cause string length to return a value that can be cast to um, a negative integer. And what we have here is um, an attacker controlled string. We apply a string length to it, and we assign the result um, to a variable of type int, although it should be um, size t. So you, you change signedness here, and subsequently you have a, a signed comparison because both are, well, so both values are of type int, which means that if you are able to specify a negative number in the first line, so a long enough string, we would bypass this, this check and then cast this negative number to a size t again. And the only requirement for this is that we are actually able to specify a large enough string. And well, 10 years ago and on 32-bit platforms, this was, well, simply not possible or unfeasible. And on 64-bit platforms, this is not an issue at all, right? So you have enough memory, you can address it, and those bugs are basically um, sitting there wait waiting to be triggered. Okay, so um, finally we uh, assessed the, the prevalence of these kind of flaws in real-world software. So what we did was to collect um, packages from Debian Stable, which were written in C or C++, and labeled as required, important, or standard. And additionally, the 200 most popular C, C++ projects on GitHub, and we applied the following two measures um, to it. So we simply counted these um, problematic implicit type conversions that are related to this um, migration to 64-bit platforms. And second, we modeled very specific use cases or patterns for these issues and counted their occurrences in these um, code bases as well. So as mentioned, we are particularly looking at this 
problematic conversions that are exclusive to 64-bit um, platforms or data models. And we do not count, um, well, explicit um, costs. So if a developer explicitly casts stringlang to type int, he hopefully knows what he's doing and yeah, can't do anything about that. So what we basically did was to compile those, those packages um, on 32-bit uh, platform and on a 64-bit platform and en enabled this um, conversion warning. And we saw that we had an additional 50% um, of these problematic width conversions, so involving types where the, the width um, had changed in comparison to 32-bit um, platforms, which translates to um, 442 of those problematic conversions um, per package and average, and 45,000 in total. So this is um, quite astonishing number, right? And also what was really interesting to see is that about 50% of those conversions actually um, concern conversions between size T and unsigned int. And this kind of undermines the, the rationale that developers seem to um, set size T and unsigned int on the same level, which is um, quite problematic on 64 bits. Okay, so you have this, this huge amount of, of findings and um, problematic um, conversions. And what we did next was to model some very specific um, patterns of these, these flaws um, using control flow and data flow. So for instance, we had this um, A12 call which translates or converts a string to an integer of type long. And we were interested in the situation where this is again assigned to a variable of type int. Then this um, map, co map copy um, call with an integer as a third parameter, so the length parameter. Um, a for loop with a size t uh, loop counter and where we um, change the values of, or increase or decrease the values of um, a variable of type int. And this um, nice example, we have the string length assigned to a, a type int variable. And what you, what you did was to, well, count these occurrences and um, put it in relation to um, those usage patterns where things um, were all um, good for these functions. And, well, in the, you see the results in this, this table up here. Um, we recorded between 10 and 20% of these incorrect patterns um, across this um, code basis. And at least you, we saw that um, for Debian stable, you have um, percentily or in percentage um, less of these incorrect patterns, and at least that's presumably the um, better reviewed code base. But still, if you have a look at the, the absolute numbers, which are given in brackets and highlighted this red, um, this number is still quite alarming, right? So you have about um, 7,600 of these um, string length to int conversions, or um, 2,500 of these mem copies where you actually pass an integer. Um, so there's quite a huge potential for things going wrong. So um, in summary, we provided you with a systemization of these integer-based vulnerabilities with a special focus on the migration process um, to 64-bit platforms and provided you um, with um, working definitions for each of these flaws. And finally, we assessed the prevalence of um, this kind of 64-bit um, migration issues. Um, for instance, for, for Demand Stable, we had 15% more of these implicit problematic width conversions. And while well, we, we then narrowed down this to more specific use cases to get a, a better idea of how many of those would actually be exploitable. And we saw that um, 10 to 20% of these um, patterns we, we modeled um, were used incorrectly. So as, as mentioned before, this 
appears to be um, still an issue, although um, we moved um, to 64 bits um, about 10 years ago. And we credit this to basically the lack of awareness for these different types or the, the width of these particular types. And also we saw that the, um, the warnings we have in, in current compilers are kind of insufficient and too generic to actually um, bring the developer to a point where he's um, taking care of those. Okay, um, that's from my side and I'm happy to take any questions. If you have any questions, please come to the microphone. Would you say that this is specifically a C, C++ issue of reinterpreting into the width of the architecture? Or would you see similar issues in, let's say, Java platforms that also don't, by default, just check for no overflow there on comparisons? Um, well, yeah, we, we saw this, this bug in, in Signal um, a couple of weeks ago, right? There, there was the assumption that uh, the length of a file would fit into an integer, although the, the types on, on the Java VM are kind of fixed. So this is kind of a related issue, which, well, it's this, this lack of awareness for the, the sizes of the individual types. But mainly it is um, targeting these this data models for um, C, C++, I think. Uh, hi, uh, Razvan Dakonescu, University Politecnica of Bucharest. Um, I'm kind of wondering more about kind of mitigating this topic. So you did that modeling with uh, variables and mem copy. Would this be possible to be integrated in, some, in a tool such as Coverity and prevent these bugs from appearing automatically? Or are there any subtle use case cases where it possible, it's not possible to do it automatically. It has to be somehow the program itself, uh, himself needs to do it manually. Um, you mean uh, completely statically, statically uh, or? Most likely, yes. I mean, I, I, feed the, yeah. I feed the source code to the Coverity scan. It's an open source project, so it, it should be done automatically. And would it be able to do that, uh, assumingly Coverity scan in, incorporates the, the model that you presented? Um, I, I guess if you are able to narrow it down in a meaningful way, so if you specify these, these use cases well enough, then I guess. Okay, all right, uh, let's thank the speaker one more time.